Hey there, in this video, I'll give you a quick overview of how to use Furikake. Furikake is a versatile plugin effect capable of creating a wide variety of looks. It features extremely fast rendering, letting you visualize ideas instantaneously and turn them into motion. It's a feature-rich plugin, so please refer to the included manual for a complete rundown. In this video, we'll take a look at the four core functions of this plugin. The emitter, particle, physics, and deform. The emitter group controls the emission count, particle speed, emission type, range, and direction. Now this is what the default particle setup looks like. Increasing the velocity changes the particle's initial speed. We could raise the velocity random attribute to add some variation to the initial speed. So currently, the particles emit from a single point. Let's change that and switch it to a box type emitter. By increasing emitter per second, we could emit more particles. Let's also change the box size from 50, 50, 50 to 500, 500, 500. Now the emission source clearly forms a box shape. Other emitter types include sphere, a grid type emitter, uh, the layer emitter, which uses a comp layer as the source, and a light emitter. This uses After Effects lights as the emitter origin. Right now, the emission direction is completely random. If we change the direction uniform to directional, then adjust the y-axis, you'll see particles fly in a single direction. Setting the directional spread to zero removes variation, uh, giving you a clean one direction burst. Now aside directional, there is bidirectional, which emits from two opposite directions. There's also disk, emits along a plane, outwards radiates out from the center, a target which shoots towards a specific position. And yeah, those are the uh, emission types that you get. You could also rotate the emission itself. You could rotate the emitter shape on these X, Y, Z axes. However, if you want just the particles to go in a certain direction, you have these options down below on the direction rotation on the X, Y, Z axes. The particle group controls the shape, texture, lifespan, size, color, rotation, and overall appearance. You could use the size parameter to enlarge particles. You can also add randomness to particle size by raising the size random parameter. When you twirl down size over life, uh, this will reveal a graph editor. There are four graph modes, Bezier, Step, Linear, and Sketch. Let's try sketch mode. Uh, click on the pencil icon right up here and we'll click on the graph and draw a hill shaped curve. Now each particle starts small, then grows larger, then shrinks and it disappears entirely. This follows the curve that we just drew. We could adjust the life to control how long each of these particles last. For example, we could change it from 3 to 1, which makes the lifespan shorter. We could add a little bit of variation to how long each particle lives by using the life random parameter. The opacity attribute controls the transparency of each particle. We could increase the opacity randomness, which adds a little bit of variation between all particles. We could control the opacity over life, which is similar to the graph editor that we just saw earlier. We could enable sketch mode, and then if we were to hold control while drawing, this creates a bunch of spikes in this graph. Now, if we were to scrub the timeline, you could see how this creates a flickering particle effect, something like glitter. You could also hold shift down while sketching, which draws a straight line in the curve editor. Next, we could add colors via the color parameter.
when the color type is set to solid, all particles will use a single color. You could control this over life by switching this over to over life and then open the color over life gradient editor. You could click on the gradient bar to add color points. So let's say for this one, we'll go yellow in the middle and red at the end. Now the particles shift color through that gradient as they age. If we choose random from over life, this assigns each particle to pick a color from the gradient that we just made. The blend mode defines how overlapping particles will composite on each other. This is by default set to normal. However, we could also choose additive or screen, which will apply a screen blending mode for every particle that's displayed. The circle feathering parameters softens the edges of each of these circular particles. Now, besides the basic circles, we could also apply 2D or 3D textures to each particle. So here's a pre-made composition of a bunch of emoji images. And if we were to change the particle type to 2D texture, that activates the texture subgroup from texture source, choose the emoji composition. We'll set the time type to random still frames. So each particle picks a random frame from the sequence. Once a texture is applied, rotation controls activate. You could set a base rotation and add random variants to each of these particles. You could also animate the rotation and randomize the speed per particle. Two D textures will always face the camera. However, we could also switch this to three D texture, which lets particles rotate freely in the three D space. The physics group adds physical behaviors to the particle system. For example, if we were to increase the gravity parameter, uh, this will make the particles fall. If we increase the air resistance, uh, this creates a drag effect, slowing the particles naturally. The wind parameter, as the name implies, uh, creates wind. It's a directional force that pushes particles in a certain direction. We could add keyframes here. By doing this, we could simulate gusts of wind, which the particles will fly away from. The deform group modifies the particle positions dynamically. The turbulence noise parameter applies a noise-based displacement. You could adjust the effect position parameter and scale parameter, which will change the frequency and also the intensity of the turbulence. The orbit parameter uh, makes particles swirl around their origin, producing an orbital motion. So each of these particles orbits differently, creating a motion distinct from turbulence noise. Spherical wraps particles into a circular or radial formation. And that's it for the quick overview. Even with just these core tools, you could build a huge variety of effects. For more of the advanced functions and deeper dives into controls, do check the documentation out. So give Furikake a shot and uh, see what you come up with. I'll see you next time. Bye!